Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to get a unique count of uh, values from a field uh, on pivot tables. And I'm going to show two examples, uh, one using the regular pivot table feature and another one using the power pivot feature in Excel. Um, let me go ahead and first start off with the pivot table feature. So we have a table here, and basically this is sales data. Uh, this is from the AdventureWorks uh, uh, sales data from Microsoft.com, so it's a free, um, I guess, a table of data. Uh, this is just one of the uh, data sets there. And what I'm going to do is uh, get the unique count of the customer key. So basically this customer key is a unique identifier for the customer for these sales. So there are duplicate customer keys there because the same customer can make a purchase uh, maybe one day and then the next day a few weeks later on make another purchase. And there, and looking at this data if I, if I click the cell here you'll notice that there is a count of over 60,000 records here. So I'm not going to go scroll all the way down but there's quite a bit of data here quite a bit of records. Now if I want to know if offhand if there's a lot of duplicate data what I can do here is just do some conditional formatting and take a look at the, the cells. Just do some conditional formatting, highlight the cell rules and see which one are duplicate values and I'll go with the default. If, if it's duplicate it will highlight in red. And you can already see that there is a lot of duplicates. Almost all of these uh, rows are duplicates. And so what I want to maybe tease out of here is, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this, is get uh, the unique count of the customer keys. So the one way you can do it is creating a pivot table. So this is a regular table. What I can do is go under insert and insert a pivot table. And go ahead and put it onto a new worksheet. So let me go and just put it over here. Let me go ahead and get the customer key and bring that over and bring the customer key in my values here. Um, actually, I probably don't need that there. But you can see if I do a, a count of the customer keys, not summing it, if I count it, uh, it will give me a count of how many times that particular customer key shows up. Let me go ahead also and uh, change this. Right now, the this table, the pivot table is in a compact format. I kind of like to see the um, tabular format, so the row labels or the fields show up. So show in tabular form, you can see now the field show up. So this customer key, 11,000, basically unique customer. He shows up, uh, this customer, he or she, shows up eight times. So basically this customer uh, made purchases eight times out of, uh, had eight purchase records out of uh, that data set. But if we really wanted to get a count of the unique, a unique count of all the customers, this basically gives us that. And so if I um, go ahead and uh, scroll down or just press control shift down arrow to select all of this uh, you can see they it counts up to 18 4 8 5 uh, really it's counting that last row but that's a grand total row so we can kind of discount it it's really 18 4 8 4 that's the amount of uh, customers and so now that's a way that we can get a unique count of some field in uh, Excel using pivot tables um, there is another way that we can do it, and I'll show you the, the second way we can do it, is using the power pivot feature in Excel. And so let me go ahead and scroll back up here and go ahead and show you how that works. So basically what we do is we go back into our data and we have to have the power pivot uh, feature. Now the power pivot feature is something that is native already in Excel 2013. Uh, in previous versions of Excel, you, uh, I think Excel 2010 is when it uh, became available, you basically have to download it. But with Excel 2013, you can just go ahead and enable it. What I what you can do is uh, right click. Let me go ahead and right click and go under Customize Ribbon. Uh, basically, we want to get into the Excel options and go to Add-ins. So if I went to Add-in and I went to the uh, Com Add-ins and click Go. If it's not enabled in Excel 2013, you can just enable it. If you have Excel 2010, you, you're going to have to download it and then enable it. And so mine's already enabled with that check mark. And so I'll go ahead and just cancel out of that. So once it's enabled, you have this Power Pivot uh, tab that's available. And what we want to do is we want to add this to the data model. So basically, when we add it to the data model, we're adding it to Power Pivot. So I'm going to add this table into the data model. I'll click on that. And it's going to bring up another window where it's going to look almost like the uh, Excel, uh, but basically it's going to be a little bit different. This is the Power Pivot uh, window. You can see, you will notice that it's got the rows and it's got the columns. It looks just like it. And so, after I enable it, basically I'm, I'm bringing that 
range of data, those 60,000 plus records into Power Pivot, what I can do is create a pivot table off of that now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a pivot table off of that. What it's going to do is it's going to ask me if I want to put a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet where I had my other uh, pivot table. So let me go ahead and put it into sheet one so we can pair it, compare it with the other pivot table. Let me go ahead and uh, click on this icon. Let me go to sheet one here and let me just put it over here off to the side here. Right, I'm going to click OK and click OK. And now you notice that there is another a blank kind of pivot table field for us to start putting information in. And so we see we have two tables. Uh, table one uh, is the one that is enabled for Power Pivot. I'm going to click on that. And let me go ahead and scroll down and look for the uh, customer key. This customer key is right here. Put it there. And then I'm going to put the count, I'm put also customer key here for the values here, so it's going to count it. And so it automatically sums it because there's numbers in there. What I want to do is I want to have it count it. So I'll, write, I'll click on that drop down, click on the value field settings, and you see it has the same thing, it has, it has a count here, but if I scroll down below, it will have something new called this distinct count, and so it will find out a unique count for that item. So 11,000, customer number, customer key number 11,000, when I use distinct count, well, let me go ahead and just go to uh, count and show you how it looks. I'll click OK, and you notice that it looks exactly the same. But now if I go to distinct count, let me go ahead and just right click here and go under value field settings here. It's going to bring up the same window. Let me go ahead and bring this back up here. Now I'm going to go under distinct count. So it's going to count that customer one time. Go ahead and click OK and then we'll see it, it counted it just one time. And so uh, I also like to have this in, it also by default puts it into a compact tabular format. I like to have it back into a, uh, uh, not a compact form, but a tabular form so we can see our, our headings. And so now you see that it's put a distinct count a header for that. So there's that, that, that difference. Instead of counting eight times, it knows that um, that is only one time. And if I scroll to the very bottom, let me go ahead and just press the control down arrow you'll see that it has grand totaled it, it up correctly, 18,484. So that's a distinct count of the customers. So that's your second way of doing it. So you can either uh, do a unique count via pivot table and kind of just uh, kind of do a selection of uh, the field here and kind of disregard your values area, or you can put it into Power Pivot and have Power Pivot provide a unique count and have it sum it for you. Now, there is one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're using Power Pivot, and there's the concept of, let me go ahead and scroll back up, the concept of the distinct count being non-additive. And what that means is sometimes you will see this distinct count, and you might want to sum up these distinct counts. So if I select that and go sc scroll down, let me just go ahead and press Shift, Control Shift down, or it will scroll down and select that whole range. And if I just press the shift up arrow, it's going to go up one. Now you'll notice that the, the count here says 18484. So it added up these distinct counts correctly. And it also summed it up correctly here. But you, there may be instances where it doesn't do that. When you try to uh, select that range and, and look at the, um, the addition, it might not um, add up to the grand total. Because in Power Pivot, what it does is it uh, it knows how to add up distinct counts. And let me go ahead and show you an example of what I mean. Sometimes uh, this may be a different count. If you, you sum it up, that sum may be different from the grand total sum. Let me show you an example of how that works. So let me go ahead and go into Data 2. And this is kind of a simple example. Let's say that um, Ann and Bob are the only customers that are buying uh, items. for, And we're just doing it uh, January, January to March. And Ann buys item one in January, and in uh, February, Ann and Bob, they buy items. Ann buys item two, and buy, Bob buys item three. In March, Ann buys item one, and Bob buys item four. So if we were to put this in a proper table where we just have our headers uh, for our fields, month, customer, and item, we'll have this, basically. So there's, there's one customer, uh, Ann, for item one, in February, there are two customers and two items. So it shows up kind of twice here. February, and buys item two, and Bob bought item three. In March, it's the same thing. Ann buys item one, Bob buys item four. Basically two customers and uh, two different items. Now, in essence, what happens here is basically there are just two customers. But let me show you what happens when you run this into a pivot table. So if I go to insert and insert pivot table, 
Let me go ahead and insert a pivot table here in this location, existing worksheet. I'll go ahead and insert it here, click OK. Uh, let's say our month is here and the count of our customers are here. So uh, in essence, it's kind of counted it correctly. We have uh, one customer, which is Ann, uh, for, 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 for January. Uh, two customers, which is Ann and Bob, and then three, two customers, which is Ann and Bob. Um, and, but really, it's kind of not counted it correctly in a way because we really just have two customers when you think about it, two unique customers. Um, and we can do this in the uh, Power Pivot. Let me go ahead and bring this up in Power Pivot. And it kind of shows us the the beauty of Power Pivot in, in doing distinct counts and counting it up correctly. So if we go and select this and go under Power Pivot and add to the day model, we will see that it's put up there. Let me go ahead and uh, add a ta data pivot table. Click on that and it will ask me where I want to put it. I'm going to put it in the same worksheet here side by side. Click on that and let's put it over here. Click OK and then click OK. And let's say we, we do the same thing. We have our month here and then we have our count of customers here. And it's going to be the same thing here, but let's make this the distinct count. See right now it's grand totaled at five, but let's go ahead and right click and go ahead and, and change the value few settings. Instead of count, make it a distinct count, click OK. So now you notice, uh, well, actually it's uh, kind of not uh, made this correct here, it's made January 2nd because uh, Power Pivot has a way of not recognizing the ordinal order for months. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this up here. So it, lo it looks like January is first. Let me go ahead and just select that and uh, bring January first. All right, so January, February, March. Okay, and so January we have only one unique customer, which is Ann, and February we have uh, two unique customers, Ann and Bob, and the same with March. So the power pivot p table calculated the unique customers correctly. There's only two customers. But if you try to uh, select this range and sum it up here, of course, it'll give you the wrong number. There are not five distinct customers. There's one for each month. There's one for January, two for February, and two for March. So uh, when we're doing power pivot and doing unique counts, what we have to keep in mind is when we try to manually sum the distinct counts, um, by selecting the range and kind of looking at the sum here, it will give us the wrong figure. Uh, Excel Power Pivot is actually pretty smart in trying to figure out what is the unique grand total counts by providing it down there. So there's something that you need to consider if you are using Power Pivot to make a unique or distinct count is if you try to do a double check um, by trying to select the, the row there and looking at the uh, grand total, you might think, oh, there is a difference and there's something wrong happening. Uh, it's, it's summing up here five, but it is giving me a grand total of two. Uh, there's nothing really wrong. It's basically the concept that uh, distinct counts are deemed non-additive. So you can't really add them up together by just selecting them and count and uh, summing them. You have to kind of rely on Power Pivot to really give you the correct answer, which of course in this case is two. So this is a simple example. Um, uh, I've had an instance where I'd had millions of rows and I tried to figure out why it was counting it up differently when I selected the distinct count and there was a difference in the grand total count. And this is why, because you can't really uh, add up unique counts. They're not an additive. You can't add up distinct counts. So um, that's an explanation. So here are the examples of using a pivot table, one using a regular pivot table and using and the other one using power pivot to give you uh, unique counts of, of values within a field. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.